Good morning. Uh, today we're going to continue our study about the, the body. Um, Nancy's track, um, which we covered last time, we're just going to go over a little portion of that in a little more detail using the Bible. And to remind you from last week, she says, and it is true, we are a trichotomy. The Lord designed it that way. We are made in his image and likeness. He is the Father, Son, and Spirit. We are the body, soul, and spirit. However, how, <clears throat> however only one-third dies. What about the other two-thirds? One-third is mortal, and the other two-thirds are immortal. Why is all the emphasis on the part that perishes? Compare this to food. We discard the outer layer, the shell, the peel, the skin, and protect the insides. It's what inside that is important, the orange, not the peel, the egg, not the shell. Why do we treat ourselves differently? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the saint and the years we had of her and her wisdom she received from the scripture. We pray for their family and we know that there is a loss there. And as we turn to the scripture, we can find comfort here. In the Lord's name we pray, amen. So take your Bibles and turn with me to um, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. 1 Thessalonians 4.13. And uh, re remember what Paul says in Philippians 1, verse 21. He says, for, me, for to live is Christ, to die is gain. Capital G-A-I-N-E. Not that in the scripture, little word we just passed by. But how can dying be gained in this culture we live in today? Everything today is how to expand your life, how to live better, how to eat your omega-3s and fish oils and all, all this stuff, and what's the latest Dr. Oz thing to lose weight and prolong life, and visceral fat is bad around men, and if you have a waist side bigger than 36, you're going to be dead, dead, dead. All this emphasis, all this emphasis. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Bible word for departed to be with the Lord. And it says that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. The only thing about a saint departing to be with the Lord is the hole she leaves when, when she leaves. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, it says, the last enemy. What is your last enemy? The federal government? Pain. Pain. But in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, it says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So when Adam fell, death was introduced. The last thing taken away is death. Isn't that amazing? Um, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And it talks about death and this life. If because it's been so heavily on our assembly because we lost a dear saint um, it, it's just comforting to go through these scriptures in Romans chapter 8 verse 35 it says who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. We have to take that by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Sometimes we wish we were walking by sight, but it's by faith and what it says. These verses are designed to comfort and for you to believe. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. You know, the outer man, this flesh, this shell, this orange peel that we walk around in, 
is absolutely terrified of death. But for some reason, when people drive down on the Kennedy and surrounding themselves in this thing called an automobile, death seems to be not a factor as they're weaving down on snowy roads. But generally, the outer man is absolutely terrified of death. But if you look down at verse 38 of the same book, Romans 8:38. It says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present or things to come will separate us from the love of Christ. No one wants to die. Death will be destroyed. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. And death since the fall, the Bible is not concentrating on the part that perishes. It never has. The love of the Lord Jesus Christ continues through us, through his word. Now, um, in the Bible, people have died and rose again from the dead. The Lord Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead. A very important part of our gospel. And we know who was the first one that rose from the dead in the Bible. That sorcerer brought who up? Samuel. And told um, Saul, you're going to die. You're going to be with me. And then how about the boat swallowed by the whale? Jonah. He died again. Three days he died, but he eventually died again. Haven't heard from him since, right? After he died the second time. And the, the Old Testament, uh, the New Testament, what about um, the centurion's daughter? Didn't he rise from the dead? Never heard from them again. How about Lazarus, come forth? What happened to him? Did he die again? He died again. How about when Paul was long-winded preaching? How about that boy in the rafters? Well, fell out of the window, down, and died. And Paul raised him from the dead. What happened to him? He died again. What about the Lord Jesus Christ? Did he die again? No. No. And... It's a very important stamp on our hope because he rose again from the dead and was seen among many witnesses. Um, has anyone seen Buddha lately? I've seen some statues in some gas stations. How about Muhammad? How about Confucius? Anyone seen Joseph Smith running around? How about Lee Ron Hubbard? Sign. No hope. Our hope is based on someone that actually rose from the dead and stayed alive. Let's look at that, that gain again in Philippians chapter 1. Again, our gospel is based on a hope that we will raise again from the dead because the outward man will perish and die. So in um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, we, we, I quoted it at the beginning. It says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Exact opposite of our culture today. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. For I am in a straits between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is... How much better? Far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. More needful for you. And what's that word? Betwits? Straight? I always think of that thing below Spain, when the two isles, there's that little rock of Gibraltar going through. I want to depart to be with Christ. It's more needful to stay here, to be with you to edify you, and to carry on the desires of Christ. That's the way he designed it, to stay 
in this present evil world and be an ambassador for him while we're walking on the planet. And yes, we can enjoy the Blackhawks' 17th victory. And tonight will be number 18. There are things in this life we enjoy, but that horizon of death. Mary was telling me this morning, where is she? The parts aren't working like they used to. There's grinding and popping and noises that weren't there a few years ago. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I want not, for I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart. So where does the believer go? If you read the verse, it says to depart and be what? With Christ, which is far better. Do you cease to exist? No. Do you live in unconsciousness? No. You depart. Go and be with Christ. And we're not talking um, the first fruits. Some words use the, the rapture. He is talking about death, always bearing about in his body the death of the Lord Jesus Christ while on this planet, your death. Your death of your body. The Old Testament says three score and ten. How, what, how many years is that? Seventy. And then it says by reason of strength, you might, might get more, but they will be in what? Misery. How many have parents that made it in their 80s? Wasn't for most, it wasn't that pleasant of a time because your desires that can't go. I remember just this week, I was picking up a 26-pound bar, putting it over my head 30 times. I remember five years ago, I was grabbing two of them. What happened? Well, you're out of shape. No, I'm lo old, losing strength. Losing strength. The memories of what I used to be able to do. Oh, it's 9 o'clock. I think I'm going to collapse, right? What's that joke? I remember when a mo uh, dinner and a movie was the beginning of a date. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're dying. This outward flesh is departing. And the verse is talking about death. It says in... Uh, um, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we need to live like the occurrence of first fruits is going to occur, is what the verse is encouraging us to do, and not to despair whatever condition we are on the planet. And if you go the other route, what's tonight? Big night in what Sin City? Academy Awards. They're all spend gazillions of dollars on dresses and makeup and lifts and tucks and 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 all all this stuff to look good. And Mark eight thirty six says, and you won't hear this verse tonight. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? No profit in it down here, that stuff, that Oscar. The only part in Chicago we have to do with it is they're made here. Human spirit, God, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible defines death in Genesis thirty-five seventeen, 17. Um, and it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have a son also. And it came to pass as her soul wa was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoi, but his father called him Benjamin. She died. The Bible defines the soul departing the body. 
the Bible uses both departing. When um, Stephen was stoned, when the Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross, they talked about the Spirit departing. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is, time, is at hand. Soul, spirit, leaving the body, what's left? The flesh down here, that returns to the dust, and the spirit and soul go up and return to God. Now, Joyce got me started on this about this body because she said at her funeral she wants Second Corinthians chapter 5 read. But let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 before we get to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The end of 4. I found that out on my own. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're talking about the outward part that perishes in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And look at that word in verse 7. It's this, this body is always talked about as a little temp, temporary thing. And it says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels. That the excellency of power may be of God and not in us. We're walking around in something that came from the earth. Earthen vessels. So tomorrow at work, how's your earthen vessel today? See what reaction you get. In verse ten, verse ten, always bearing about in the body, the always bearing about in the what? Body, 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 earthen vessels, body. The dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse eleven, so earthen vessels, body. Look how he calls it in verse eleven. He says, "For which we live are." For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Mortal flesh, earthen vessel, body. These bodies die. Earthen vessels die. Look at verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So what part's more important, just based on that verse? The inward man. Outward man perishes. Mortal flesh. Body. Earthen vessels. Now, we get to, we, uh, we get to the good news about our earthen vessel, about our body, about our mortal body. It says in, in verse 1, For we know that if our earthly house, another adjective described this outward shell that we carry around our soul and spirit, our earthen houses of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Ver Verse 2 of 2 Corinthians chapter four, 5. For in this we groan earnestly, desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Nature teaches that. What's that snake that sheds his skin? A lot, a lot do, but the one that's the most graphic. Look it up on YouTube. Look at the python. Getting brand new skin. I don't, you know, I want a glorified body from the heavens. But the point is, we get a new body, a new body. And it says, we groan, we earnestly desire. That's both the departed and us down here. Wouldn't you love the first fruits to occur today? New body. Again, for in Second uh, Corinthians five two, for in this we, gro we groan, earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is in from he from heaven. If so be that, being clothed, we sh sh 
we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. First fruits. Maybe today. Maybe before the end of this message. Now, let's let's go over to the, the chapter that in Paul's epistles, 1 Corinthians 15, that that talks about this resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and please look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. So how many trumps are there? If there's a last trump, there's got to be at least the first trump. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorrupted, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption, corruptible, must put on incorruptible, incorruption, and this mortality must put on immortality. It's good news if you ask me. So when this corruptible shall be put on incorruption and this mortality shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory. Gain. Far better. Presence of the Lord. Doesn't sound like a bad thing to happen to you, does it? I like that part about the last enemy being destroyed. The thing we all dread. Now, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 5.5. 5. We have a, tra uh, for those of us that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again the third day for, our, for the dead, we have something, I couldn't think of a better word to use. The, the Bible calls it, we're given the spirit when we believe. And he's also a travel agent. When we depart, to, he guides us to the Lord. When that rich man in Luke chapter 16 died, he had eyes, ears, uh, doesn't say nose, he could taste, he had desire for water. He didn't depart to be with the Lord. He departed in torments. Uh, we brought Ella in, her friend Zoe uh, told her about the hot place. That, that, our message isn't about the hot place. Uh, our message today is about being comforted because the saint has departed to be with the Lord. Shouldn't be sad for us. We should be what? Rejoicing for her. Stephanie has a uh, cousin that's going on a cruise. We should go and, oh, I guess you can't rejoice on a cruise anymore. <laughs> She's going on an Alaska cruise. We rejoice for her. That's, that, that, I can't use cro cruise as a something you would aspire to go to for a great vacation anymore, I guess. When, the, when it says these vile bodies, I, I bet you could give a good gospel there on that on that cruise right now because 4,300 people lived through uh, the stench of these vile bodies. Uh, got a little off track. Second Corinthians 5.5, 5, it says, Now, he that wrought us for the same self thing as God who 
who also has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. It says that in uh, um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, this, this travel agent, I call it, one of the jo jobs he does is to make sure the believer, something given by God, that when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ died for all your sins and you're placing your faith in that as the reason you're not going to the hot place, you get this travel agency and you might afterwards not believe, but he's going to take you to the presence of the Lord. That spirit that is given to us, I, I find that fascinating that one of his jobs is to make sure you, you go to the presence of the Lord. Now we talked about you know some people in the in the uh, Bible that died and rose again. the The only one that didn't pull someone out of the uh, grave was um, in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse four. What happened? The apostle Paul went into a city. And there was the organizations of the priest of Jupiter. I'm, I'm embellishing the story a little bit, but I think this could have happened. The, the, um, the circle of the priest of Jupiter were making a fortune, getting people to buy idols to worship the god of Jupiter. Now here comes Paul and says, this, that is a bunch of, huh, you know, you need to trust in the living God. So... What did the organizations of these, the, the chief of Jupiter do? Oh, this is a horrible thing. We need to find a new way to make a living. No. Let's kill that guy. So they managed to corrupt politicians. Imagine that. Have a real quick mock trial, Paul. Surround him. Sentence him to death. Stone him. Say, now, we're done stoning him. They told the people that were with him. Take his body and get out of our city. And they dragged Paul's dead carcass out, and uh, he didn't stay dead. And he recounts that thing, he says, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, how that he was caught up into paradise. So Paul went to paradise. And our pastor made a good point when he studied this thing out. After Paul was caught up into paradise, he never feared death again. And his disciples and his apostles and his friends would sometimes have to physically grab the guy and go, you're getting out of here because they're going to kill you. And Paul says, big deal, who cares? Isn't that a state we want to be in for our Lord Jesus Christ as an ambassador of the, uh, on this planet to a lost world? Caught up in the paradise. Taste of glory. But we're reading about it here. Almost as good. Now, let's close with one more passage. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We started with this. It says in um, verse 13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as the others which have no hope. Those that don't place in this dispensation their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as a full payment for their sins have no hope. Nancy we know, had hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are also asleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. What's all that mean? 
How many studied economics? Last in, first out, LIFO. This is first in, the dead in Christ shall rise first, first out. So it goes, shout, Trump, dead in Christ shall rise. They'll get their bodies before we do. And then last Trump, it says, in uh, Corinthians, we'll get our bodies and we'll be together forever with the Lord. That's the progressive. And while you're with the Lord, like Nancy is, what is your earnest desire? Because you're alive. Your earnest desire is to be clothed upon with your new body. And, and so we end with the last verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. It says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. When you're going someplace, don't you, and you've never been there before, don't you like to, the more you plan, the more you go to the library, the more you look, don't you feel more comfortable? Why is death any different? Don't you want to know what's going to happen? Okay, we'll pick that up next time.